Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this, we will learn about arrays in Java, its properties, how the data is stored in arrays. Then we'll see different types of arrays. And in the end, we will see how to process the arrays and also how we can clone them. So without any further delay, let's start. Arrays are objects which store multiple variables of same data type. It can hold primitive types as well as object references. In fact, most of the collection types in Java, which are part of java.util package, use arrays internally in their functioning. Since arrays are objects, they are created during runtime and having a fixed length. Arrays in Java are index based with zero as starting index. That is first element stored at zeroth index and second element at the first index and so on. Let's see a few properties of array. Arrays are objects. They can hold the reference variables of the other objects as well, which will point to the memory location in heap. They are created during runtime and as they are objects, they are created on heap itself. They are having a fixed length. Now let's see how the data is stored in array. So data is stored in array in contiguous uh, fashion in the memory. Here you can see in this uh, picture, we have an array of length 9 with its first index as 0 and last index as 8. So the first element at the 0th index is 40 and the last element at 8th index is 89. So in this array, we are only storing the integer values, but it can store any other primitive types as well as the other objects references as well. Now let's see a few pros and cons of using arrays. Under the pros, uh, for arrays, random access of element is possible. That is, we can access any element if we know its index directly. Due to this specific property, the data retrieval is very much efficient because we can directly access any element in the array. Under cons, it cannot grow dynamically. That is, if we have declared an array of size 5, we cannot store more elements or we cannot update the same array to store more elements than the initially uh, decided size. So in that way, uh, it's a kind of a rigid data structure and if we want to store more elements, we need to create another array with the higher size and copy all the elements of existing array. We have two types of arrays. One is single dimension, other one is multi-dimension. So what is single dimension array? Single dimension array is a type of linear array which can either represent a single row or a column. So if we want to create an array of string to store a list of names, we can do it like this. So string names, then brackets and using new keyword and string, then we need to provide the size of array in that in those brackets. So here we are mentioning three. That means the array names, it can have maximum of three elements. There is another way of uh, declaring uh, an array as well. So just given below, we can directly give the values uh, on the right hand side of equal to sign and automatically the number of elements we are giving on the right hand side parenthesis, it will take create an array of the same size. So in this case, again, the size of names array will be three. And how to access the elements as we have already discussed previously that it is a random access mechanism. So we can directly access any element using its index here. If we want to print the second element, which means the index will be one. So we can directly access names and providing the index. So if we do it names one, then it will print current on the console. Then we have multidimensional array. The multidimension array consists of 2D and 3D arrays. It has multiple rows and multiple columns. We also call it an array of arrays. So this is how it will be declared. So instead of a single bracket, we have to uh, add one more bracket here so that we can specify the number of rows and number of columns. The first bracket will be having uh, the size of number of rows and the second will be specified as number of columns. Similar to the 1D array, the uh, initialization can also be done during the declaration itself. So here you can see uh, in the numbers, we are storing three different rows which are having three columns uh, inside them. So if we want to access any element, it will be uh, by using the combination of both num the row number as well as the column number. So if we want to access the highlighted number, then we can do that using the row number one as well as the column number one. So it will print four on the console. Next one is jagged array. 
so it is an array of arrays with different number of columns so suppose we have a requirement where the number of columns uh, cannot be same so in this particular example you can say the first row contains three columns the second row contains four column and the third row contains only two columns so that kind of array is possible in java and is known as jagged array the accessing of the elements will remain same because it's an index based now let's see how we can process the arrays when processing array elements we often use either for loop or for each loop because all the elements in an array are of the same type and the size of array is known or can be calculated using its length property just as we can pass the primitive type values to the methods we can also pass arrays uh, to the method as an argument or a method may also return an array as a return value also now let's see how we can process uh, the arrays so this is a names array where i have three names uh, already added in this array so the first one is using for each loop so this is the syntax of for each loop it will take a list of names and one by one it will iterate through and uh, we are printing it on the console in this specific kind of loop index has no role to play but in case of the standard for loop using that uh, index variable so this is how we can iterate through the array so int i is equal to 0 and i less than names dot length so it's a variable length so we need to check it while executing the for loop itself so that the for loop should not go beyond the uh, length of the array now let's try to run this program and see the output it should be same so here you can see using for each loop it has printed all three elements and using for loop also it has printed all three uh, elements now let's discuss a couple of exceptions that may occur during your program execution the first one is null pointer exception so here uh, this is uh, an array names of size 3 and uh, to the first and second element i have already assigned values but the third um, component in array is null because i have not assigned any value so if i try to access that and uh, try to invoke any kind of function on top of that i will be getting null pointer exception at line number 10 let's try to execute this program and here you can see null pointer exception is there uh, it is also giving me a clear message cannot invoke string dot length because name 2 is null because we have not assigned any value to it now let's try to assign a value to it okay so now it is having a value so it will be printing what is the length of that thing okay so here you can see 4 is printed but what is this and another exception has occurred so this is the second kind of exception that you will be facing while working with the arrays which is array index out of bound so what we have done here we are trying to access index 3 but in the array itself it can only store three values that means the maximum index value can go up to 3 minus 1 2 so if we try to access any index value which is not in the range of that specific array it will throw a runtime exception which is array index out of bound that means index 3 is out of bounds for length 3 now let's see that uh, with an example so i have this array of numbers where i have stored 10 different numbers so i have also created one uh, print method to which i am passing my array and printing all the uh, elements of that array so here uh, using the clone method here on line number 8 I am cloning this specific 1D or single dimension array to another variable called clone numbers. So what it will do, it will create a separate object and a separate reference in the memory also. So if we try to use equals operator, we should be getting false as an output here. So let's try to execute this program. So here you can see uh, I have printed first the uh, original numbers array for that I have cloned it and uh, assign its values to the clone numbers and printed that as well so it is coming out to be same but when i try to use equals on both the objects it has returned false that means they are two different objects in the memory that's it for this video please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any new video update thanks for watching see you next time